Right, now we've got some survivors of the Second World War. The first is a German Panzer III. And this tank was captured during the war at Alan Halfa and it's, um, it's been restored by the Tank Museum Workshop to a very high standard so that it's in full operational order. Like all German tanks of that time, it's got a rear-mounted Maybach six-cylinder engine or four-cylinder engine in some cases driving forward to a gearbox at the front and then to drive sprockets at the front. It's fitted with torsion bar suspension, meaning you've got bars running across the tank which twist when they're raised or lowered by a wheel and spring back into form afterwards. So that's true. It's quite a successful type of suspension. It was never used by the British. We were always very nervous of torsion bar suspension because of the way A, it lifted the vehicle up a bit, and secondly, because if there was any damage from lines, it was very difficult to put right why the Germans lost so many of them. But in its day, the Panzer III was the dominant German tank of the Panzer Division. The Panzer IV came along later with a slightly more powerful gun, but the Panzer III was the tank that was being the bearing the brunt of the fight. First appeared in the early March with a 37 millimeter gun. That was later upgraded to a 50 millimeter gun, which I exhibit has on it. And um, Latterly, they produced some with a 75, short 75 mm gun. You'll see one of those in the museum if you go and opened up so you can look inside. Oddly enough, unlike most tanks of that period, it doesn't have a turret ring basket so that the crew, with the tank traverses left or right, have to run down to keep up with the gun. Which is a very comfortable in. It's tank for a five-man crew, three of whom would be in the turret, two at the front, the driver, who's sitting on the right as you look at it, and then a whole machine gunner sitting next to him. Generally speaking, in Russian tanks, in German tanks, I should say, that's where the wireless operator was. 